Praise the Lord, everyone. God bless you. Welcome once again to the He's a Wonder Music Ministry Conference Prayer Line, where, with the grace of God, we come together every week to give God the praise that He is worthy of, to magnify God because He is worthy. To lift him up because God is God. Every week, I put myself in a position for God to use me to talk to someone, to touch the heart of someone, whether it's here in Chicago where we're located or it's in another state, another country. Wherever this travels and whomever listens to it, I give God the glory because it didn't have to happen. There are times when I put the broadcast out and I check it later. It says you had one view or two views or 10 views or 50 views. I'm like, you know what? Everyone that listened is someone that God can touch someone that the word of God can change. So I had to not get hung up on, well, I didn't have 10 million views or I didn't hit the 1 million mark. It's okay. Because sometimes God puts you in a position to where he wants you to get that small group of people that otherwise would not listen, that otherwise would not even join in. And I believe that that's what God uses me for at this point in life. Now, what he's going to do later in life, I have no idea. But for now, I accept my position that God is doing through this ministry. I have quite a few things I have in mind today to talk about so I'm going to try to with the grace of God bring them in together and that God gets the glory out of everything that is said so let us pray Father God in the name of your son and our savior Jesus Christ I thank you for first of all waking me up this morning I thank you for the activities of my limbs a reasonable amount of health and strength and the mind to continue to serve you, to continue to magnify you and lift you up because you are worthy of the praise. These blessings and all other things we ask and thank you for in the name of Jesus. Amen. I talk to a number of people throughout the weeks, throughout the week between coming on the line. And I come to the conclusion that we are all going through something. We are all dealing with something. Believe it or not, even millionaires have problems. Even the rich man has problems. His problems are not how is he going to pay his bills or Can he afford to buy the car that he needs or the food that he needs? No, millionaires have other problems. And even the Bible says that it's easier for a camel to get through an eye of a needle than it is for a rich man to make it into heaven. Well, first of all, he's not talking about a needle that you sew with. It's a passageway that to get from one point to the other, the camel has to strip everything off and from what I have studied and understand, has to get down on his knees and be pulled through, laid through. And it's a tight squeeze even then. Meaning that the rich people, I'm not going to say all, but I'm just, they have this money, so they have this different way of thinking. Uh, I was talking to a guy years ago, and he said, the lack of money is a problem, and the abundance of money is a problem. Some say, well, I'll take the 
problem of having too much money. Well, be careful. Be careful. In things going on in life, the news, as soon as the news come on, breaking news about this, that, and the other, those things we have no control over. We must just pray and ask God to intervene on our behalf. And then we have to look at the bigger picture in some cases of what caused those things to happen. Sometimes the fun, uh, the foundation of a problem is that there's not enough jobs, there's not enough education, there's not enough of something that causes people to do the things that they do. And we need to get to the root of the problem and stop putting a Band-Aid on the gaping wound that's bleeding and get to the foundation, get to that artery, sew it up, close it up, and then the healing process can begin. Today, I was talking to a young man who's having some life issues like, like we all have. And one thing I told him is that you're fighting a battle that's not yours. You're fighting a battle that's not yours. And he said, well, he's not as strong as, uh, I'm trying to put it in a gentle way. I think he said, God, think he's stronger than what he is and he's not. And I said, well, God would not give you these battles, these valleys to go through, these mountains to climb, if God did not already know in his omnipresent sovereign omnipotence that you, me, and everyone else that God allows to go through things can handle it. He doesn't give his biggest battles to his strongest soldiers, no. He makes his strongest soldiers by giving the ones who are not the strongest at the time, the biggest battles. Because in the midst of the battles, when we do this one thing that we, we just, for, I don't know, maybe it's because we're men, I don't know. We just will not relinquish the reins of the battle to the one who the battle belongs to. The battle is not ours, it's God's. Yolanda Adams sang a song about it. We're battling, we're fighting a battle that, that doesn't belong to us. I preached a sermon a few years ago, tag God in. We're in the ring. We're trying to fight against Satan who is going to defeat us on our own, and he knows it. But when we tag God in and we allow God to fight the battle for us or through us, then we are automatically in the winner's circle. But as long as we're in the battle and we're trying to fight it and we're trying to figure it out and we're trying to make sense of it, then we, we're automatically lost and the devil knows that because he knows that we don't have the power on our own. My mother told me many years ago, she said, Cardell, you have great willpower. She said, you can withstand and withhold from doing things longer than most people that she knew. She said, but willpower will only get you so far. There are some people that have no willpower whatsoever. They give in right away. And there are some that apparently I'm in the class of that have this ex ex exorbitant amount of willpower that comes off as being stronger than what I really am, but that's the power of me. It helps me to withstain and to, to withdraw from certain things, but without the power of God, my willpower will only get me in trouble because it gives me a false sense of security that I'm winning when I'm not winning because I'm using my power and not God's power. So what I had to learn to do is relinquish my willpower and give in to God's power. And then when I realized that the battle that I'm fighting isn't mine, it belongs to God, then I was in a better place thinking, hey, why am I fighting somebody else's battle? Why am I trying to fight a battle that God said, I didn't tell you to fight that, I told you to trust me. And I will fight your battle. I will intervene. I will either come in and take over completely or I will work through you. But you have to give me the praise and the glory and over and most of all, most of all, you have to trust 
God. You have to trust that even on those days where I, I've even said to myself, I don't, I don't think I'm strong as I need to be for this battle. Then apparently I am because I keep waking up another day. I keep getting up and God keeps telling me that if, if you weren't strong as you think you are, you wouldn't be here. You would have been destroyed. So apparently there's something in me that God can use. There's some force inside that once I give in to it, to the power of God, that I will win all the battles. The Bible says there's no weapon formed against you that will, will prosper. It, it never said it wouldn't form. It never said that you wouldn't see the, battle, the, the weapon. It just said it won't prosper. Meaning you'll see it. It'll come against you, but you can know automatically that you are not going to win the battle, that 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 force, that that entity, that thing, is not going to win against you. In this life, once we realize that we're not fighting a battle that belongs to us, and when we learn to trust in God, things change. Things change. Think of life like this. You're walking down the beach and, and there's no nothing in front of you. It's, it's the sand is smooth. The waves are not coming up to the shore as of yet. And you're walking. And you're walking and you're walking. And you look back and you see some pitfalls. You see some holes. You see some deep footprints. You see some light footprints. And when you look ahead of you, there is smooth. There's, there's, there's nothing there yet. And you keep focusing on the bad. You keep focusing on where you were and what happened yesterday and what happened last year and the loved ones that God decided to take home and, and the bills that you have and the problems that's behind you. And as long as you focus on that, the path in front of you will never seem as bright and as clear as it should. But when you allow the waves of God's love and mercy, the waves of water that does not come to destroy, but comes to cleanse you and save you from you. My aunt, you may have heard me say this many times, told me I am my, I'm in my own self way. I'm in my own self way. What does that mean? It means I'm walking backwards on the shore. I can't see what's ahead of me. I can't enjoy what God has, has put in front of me because I'm too busy looking at what I have done and what I'm currently doing. You need to stop. You need to stop and turn around and look ahead and say, Father, in the name of your son, Jesus, I pray that your love and mercy comes up like a strong wave. And the wave may be high. The wave, wave may seem like it's going to overtake you. But you won't drown. The word of God said you won't drown when the waters come. Embrace the wave. Ask for the wave. Lord, I need a wave of mercy. I need a wave of your love. I need a wave of your grace. I need you to wash away what I think is good. I need you to purify me. I need you to, to make me anew. Just stand there. And then when the wave of his mercy and grace comes upon you, if then you look around, you'll see that your past sins, your past discrepancies, your, your past that, that was not quite what God wanted it to be will be washed away. Stop dwelling on yesterday. Stop dwelling on last year. Stop dwelling on those past relationships that didn't work. Those job ventures that didn't go through. Those things that you thought made sense. It should have worked because I figured out this. Well, see, God's math and our math are different. God's math and our math are different. God's math can say zero plus zero can be a billion. Well, we're stuck on one plus one equals two. We're stuck on, I need $500. I need $1,000. I need this. God said, no, what you need is me. You say, well, 
the way the world is set up, see, then we get intellectual and we try to be smart with God. Well, the world says that I need this to get that and I need to do this to get that. And God said, well, I own the world. I own everything. I can change the hearts of man. I can give you favor that your credit rating can be two. Not 200, two. You can have zero money in the bank. And God can give you favor to where you can go into that dealership and they see this and say, your credit is two. You've never seen that before. And you say you have no down payment. And you can walk out of there in a brand new car with a low interest rate. Why? Because you have obtained favor through God. But as long as we try to reason it, well, I can't do this and I can't do that. I can't this. So what you're doing is you're telling yourself what you can't do and then you believe yourself. And what happens? You can't and you won't. But when we focus on what's ahead of us in faith, and when we stop fighting battles that are not ours, and we stop leaning to our own understanding, and we stop trying to reason it out on our with our finite minds, and when we give it all over to God, we will then see that God will take it and then he will make something out of nothing or he will destroy that which is trying to destroy you. He will put a barrier, a hedge of protection around you. He will do things that you cannot do. And man will marvel at how in the world can this person who has nothing get what he has got? How in the world can what was taken away from him last week benefit him next week? Why? Because when you relinquish your authority to God's authority, then you live in God's peace. When you let God hide you, when you let God comfort you, when you let God let that wave come, don't fear the wave. Embrace it. Surfers embrace the wave. They they look for the wave. Why? Because they want to ride the wave. They want to they want the biggest wave that can come. Matter of fact, uh, from what I've seen, the bigger the wave, the more fun they seem to have. And on the other hand, we down here who say we trust in God and say we believe and say we want the blessings. When a wave comes, we run. We run and try to hide. We run and say, well, God can't get me if I'm here. God can't do this if I'm there. God can do whatever it is God wants to do whenever God wants to do it. What do we have to do? We have to learn to trust the process. And that's not easy. Somebody told me that years ago. Trust the process. Hey, okay, you trust it. You're not in my situation. You don't have my needs and my uh, my responsibility. People are not looking for you to do this and provide. You you have what you need. And they told me, you don't know what I went through to get to this point. You don't know the nights I cried. You don't know the times I tried to work it out myself and it didn't work. You don't know how many times I needed an amount of money or a resource to a door to be open and it wasn't there. You don't know what I went through. But we can learn from those who've went through it. We can learn th from those who are in it. Somebody said that a, a, a drunk man can't tell you, and yes, he can. He can tell you the, the, the value of not being drunk. He can tell you that the situation he is in has caused him to lose his family, his job, his car, his house. You can learn from him. Don't do what he's doing. You can learn from someone who's homeless because they can tell you what happened to them. They can tell you that I made some, some bad choices. I, I kept focusing on the footprints in the sand and I didn't look forward and I, and I fell off a cliff. They can let you know that I didn't embrace the wave. I tried to run from the wave and because of that, the things that were stuck on me, didn't become unstuck, and now I'm stuck with them. You don't want to be stuck with anything that you don't need to be stuck with. It's like carrying weight around. It's like, what's the song, Bag Lady? You know, you got too many bags, bags of problems. Old relationships, jobs that didn't go through, uh, business ventures that failed. Uh, things that you thought should go a certain way and didn't. You're carrying all of that around. 
So you will never be free. You will never be in a position where you can obtain from God what God wants from you because you won't shed the problems that you had. You have to let it go. You have to go through the process. And is the process easy all the time? No. Is the process necessary? Yes. If those, if the waves don't come and wash away the footprints, if the waves don't come to cleanse you, you will be dirty, you will be hot, and you will constantly pay attention to the things you've done in the past, and you will not turn around, be made new, be cleansed, and see that you have a clean slate ahead of you when you let God fight the battle that is not yours in the first place. It's time to tag God in. I gave someone an analogy about Superman. Superman was defeated in one episode, uh, one movie, however they go. And he didn't know his strength. He didn't know his capabilities until he talked to who? His father. And his father had to let him know that you're not just Clark Kent. You're not just this person. You are who you are through the person that you are. That's the same thing with God. As long as we stay Clark Kent and Peter Parker... We'll never have the full potential of who God wants us to be. As long as we stay Bruce Banner, we'll, we'll never have the strength of the hope. We have to transform. We have to be uh, uplifted. We have to be changed. We have to realize that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. We have to learn to stop leaning to our own understanding and acknowledge him in all our ways. We have to learn that God is bigger than everything. What does the song say? Why I'm trying to figure it out. He already worked it out. But we're not sitting at his table. We're sitting at our table. And God is saying, if you come over to my table, I have food. I have shelter. I have all of the resources. He said, wait, wait, wait. I'm trying to figure this out. And God said, if you come over to my table, uh, the angels will serve you and, and, and change. You know, wait, wait, wait. I'm trying. I almost got it. And God is saying, if you come over to my table, everything that you're trying to do, I said, hold on a minute. And God, oh, okay. And God loves us so much that he would allow us to try to figure it out on our own. But what we don't understand is all the time we're trying to figure it out, he's still covering us. He's still protecting us. He's still loving on us. And then when we get so tired and so broken down that we come running to him, Instead of being petty like humans would be, he says, come on, my son. I've seen you struggle. I I've seen the tears that you have shed in the, in the dark places. I know your heart. I know your mind. I know you are trying to figure it out. But now you have come to the conclusion that it's not your battle. You can't do it. And I'm here for you. But the thing is, we have to go sit at the master's table told a young man the other day, you will never, as far as I know, get a, a Whopper from McDonald's. I went to McDonald's years ago and I wasn't paying attention. I said, hey, I need a Whopper with this. She said, wait, wait, we don't have those. I said, why? She said, what do you mean, why? I said, I come here to get a Whopper. I want a Whopper with, with no cheese, with no no onions and extra. She said, sir, this is a McDonald's. I said, well, I'll never get a Whopper from here. Well, she said, no, you won't. And the story, the, the lesson was that is pay attention to where you are. Pay attention to where you're going. Because you'll never get a Whopper from McDonald's. Or you'll never get a Big Mac from Burger King. Because they don't serve that. And when you come to God's table, you have to eat what God has prepared for you. When God says, I want you to have fish. And you say, no, I want steak. God said, no, 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 I want, you need fish. Or you need steak. And you say, no, I want this. God said, no, 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 I know what's best for you. And you say, well, I know what I want. And God says, what you want is not what I want for you. Well, I'm going to eat what I want. And God says, go ahead. And then when it kills you or it hurts you or it puts you in a position where you can't function, then you go running to God saying, God, I don't feel good because I told you that. But he doesn't hold it over us like people do. He doesn't be, he's not petty and vindictive. He says, come on, my child. But we have to get to a point, ladies and gentlemen, we have to get to a point that we let God be God, as simple as that. 
until we acknowledge God for being God and that God can do all things and that we can trust him, even if it's been years since you've talked to him, even if you think you can't talk to him, he's saying, you can talk to me anytime you want. I'm not a religion. I'm not a denomination. I'm not a cult. I, I'm not an idol. I'm God. Come talk to me. I already know what you need. I already know what you want. I just need you to humble yourself and talk to me. And when you do, he'll listen. He understands. And he will help you do the things that you can't do on your own. How how blessed is it to know that you've sinned, but when you turn around and look, you don't see it? How blessed is it to know that you have a bright future ahead of you as long as you trust God and allow God to do what it is that God is trying to do? How blessed are you when God is number one in your life? God wants to do a new thing. Uh, listening to a song, it was letting letting me know that he's not, he may not come to where he came to my mother. And my mother was a missionary, Nancy J. Fitzgerald. She prayed the way she prayed, and God worked in the with her and in her the way he did. But I can't expect God to work in me the way he worked in her because she was her and I am me. Pastors that have gone on uh, before me, I can't expect God to do with me the way he did with them because they were them and I am me. Matter of fact, I want God to do the new thing in me so that years from now, someone can say, hey, God did a new thing in Pastor James. And that lets me know that I have an ability, I have a chance for God to use me. What did Jesus say? He said, you're going to do greater things than I did. This is Jesus talking. Some of us, and this may sound funny, we're trying to do exactly what Jesus did. Jesus said, no, no, no. You're going to do greater things. No, I just want to do what you did. No, no. Let, let my father use you. Let, let my father use you in my name and you'll do greater things than I did. I had, I'll give you this example in my conclusion. I had an iPhone 7. And I liked the iPhone 7 because I had it. I knew how to work it. I, I got comfortable with it. And then the company said, well, you have to upgrade your phone because your phone won't work on our new network. And I said, no, I like this phone. I know everything this phone can do. I like the size. I like the, the memory. I, I like all of it. And they said, no, you got to change. I ain't want to change. I was stubborn and fought it to the last minute to where he said, if you don't change it, your phone is not going to work anymore. You won't be able to make any phone calls. You won't be able to call you. You won't be able to conduct business. You won't be able to pray for people or get messages from your family or nothing. I said, okay, all right. So I changed. Got a new phone. Do I, do I love it? No, I don't love it. Do I like it? Yes, I like it. Should I have given in before I was forced to? Yes. But we do things. We try to wait to the last minute. And God wants us to get to the point where we don't wait to the last minute. We don't wait until we're forced to. But trust him and go ahead and change. Because coming from me, this is big. What I'm about to say, change is good. <laughs> My wife laughed just now. Change is actually good. And someone else told me this. They said, you don't want better. You just need different. I didn't understand. He said, you, your truck. I got a truck that's only 20 years old. It runs, yeah. He said, you don't want a better truck. You just want a different truck because it's still going to be a truck. It's still going to have four wheels and engine. He said, you just need a different one. You don't need a better life. You just want something different. You want to move, get you a, a bigger place to live. He said, it's not better. It's just different. Uh, iPhone 14, 13 is not better than iPhone 7. It's different. They all do the same thing. So stop fighting the process. Give up that iPhone 4 and go ahead and elevate to a, at least a 12. They're up to 14 now. I told my wife the other day, I said, by the time I get rid of this 13, they'll be up to iPhone 20 maybe. But I'm going to try to be different. Once I realize that 
I need to change. I'm going to investigate and look into it. And Lord's will, I'm going to change before I get those letters and those emails of just saying that you don't upgrade that iPhone now. You, you, matter of fact, we're just going to cut it off and then you'll see. Why is my phone off? You go run into the place that you know why. Why haven't you won the battle? You know why. Why hasn't the Lord intervened on your behalf? You know why. Because you're not talking to him. You're not trusting him. You're focusing on those footprints in the past. Now, now they had a, a, a poem about footprints, and, and I think it said somebody, you know, it's, it's you first, and then you see a second footprint, that's Jesus, and then you see a, the, third, the third set was just one footprint, that's God, that's Jesus carrying you. Well, I want to give you one more. There are no footprints because Jesus is so good that he can walk on the water. Jesus is so good that he can walk above the beach. And you can travel with him. No footprints required. Are we going to learn to trust in Jesus? Are we going to learn to let, what is the song I sing? I'm going to walk with me, Lord. No, I want to walk with him. I want to fly over my problems. I want to soar and know that this is not my battle, it's his. I want to walk on the water with Jesus. Let's change our mindset and let's look to where the power is coming from. When you when you want to turn on the light, you don't go to an outlet that's dead. You find an outlet that's powered. You find a, a circuit that's on and you plug into it and you try to plug as many things into that outlet as possible because it works. So let's plug into the source. Let's go to the outlet, which is Jesus, and go to the source, which is God, and then our path will be illuminated. Let's trust in God. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we want to be plugged into the outlet that is turned on, that is powered up, that is everlasting. We have too many things plugged into dead outlets. We have too many things plugged into broken circuits. Help us. Help us to realize that until we plug into you, the source, that we will never be illuminated. We will never have the power. We're out there trying to trying to generate our own power and try to work at the same time, and we can't do both. Help us to know that you are the source, the giver of power, the light, the, the, the illumination, the, the everything. Help us to know that you and you alone, through your son Jesus Christ, is all we need to survive. Are we going to have valleys? Yes. But through you, the valleys can be made high. And the mountains can be made low. Through you, we can walk through the valley of the shadow of death and fear no evil. Through you, we can walk on the waters of our problems. Through you, we can soar over those things that are sent to kill us. Through you, we can be hidden in that secret place. We can go behind the veil where Satan can't touch us. And we can rest knowing that you have already prepared a place for us. And Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to serve you. We thank you for the opportunity to worship you. Continue to keep us and bless us. Our, our children, Lord, the children are being shot down and people are being murdered every day. Bless us, Lord. Protect us from ourselves. Protect us from the hands of the enemy that comes to kill, steal, and destroy. And we, Lord God, will be so careful to praise and magnify you. These and all other blessings we thank you for in the sweet holy name of your son, Jesus. Amen. Listen, for more information about this ministry, you know, give us a call. You can tell me the number, but I'll give it to you anyway. 773-593-4972. Visit us on the web at www.he'sawondermusicministries.org. Well, until next week, may God bless you and keep you in the sweet holy name of Jesus. Amen. To stop conference recording, press 1. To return to this session is no longer being recorded.